All right, so this video we're going to look at a, a Norman window. So it says a, a Norman window has the shape of a rectangular with a semicircle on top of it, on the top of the rectangle, or surmounted by a semicircle. If the perimeter of the window is 30 feet, find the dimensions of the window so that the greatest possible amount of light is admitted. All right, so let's draw a Let's draw a picture of it real quick. All right. So it's going to look something like that. All right, so let's label this thing. Let's label this X. We'll label that Y. All right. So let's look and see the information they gave us, and let's look and see what they want us to find. All right, so the first thing they tell us is they tell us that the perimeter is 30 feet. So that's the distance all the way around. Okay, so that's this distance plus this distance plus this plus this distance here. All right, so here we don't have a problem on the rectangle. Well, here we have a, a semicircle. Well, the, the circumference of a circle is what? the circumference of a circle is equal to 2 pi times the radius or pi times the diameter it doesn't it doesn't matter either one okay but we have a semicircle so we would have to multiply it by a half so our circumference would be pi times the radius all right now, the radius of the circle, that's the distance from the center of the circle, because this is a semicircle, out to the edge. And that distance would be what? Well, that's the same distance as from here to here. And if this is x, this is in the middle, so it's just half of x, or x over 2. That's a 2 right there. I know it's hard to, hard to read, but that's what it is. So the circumference is equal to 2 pi times the radius, I'm sorry, let's write that formula again, it's pi times the radius, that's what we had for the semicircle. All right. So pi times the radius, so that's pi times the radius times x over 2, which is, I don't know, let's, I guess we can write it as, uh, let's just do pi over 2 times x, all right? So that's the circumference, that's that distance. So now we can write down the perimeter. So the perimeter, which they tell us is 30, is equal to all right x see that x plus y plus y this is y also so that's plus 2y plus this distance which is pi over 2x <clears throat> all right now <clears throat> let's see what we've got it says find the dimensions of the window so that the greatest possible amount of light is admitted. So we want to maximize this area here. We want this opening to be as large as possible. So let's maximize that area. All right, so what's the area of this thing? Well, the area, well, x times y, that's the area of the rectangle. Now, the area of the semicircle, well, we know that the area of a circle is pi r squared, but we have a semicircle, so it's one half pi r squared. Okay. So, the, the area of the semicircle, that would be plus, we're going to add this area plus this area. So that's going to be 
one half okay times pi all right times the radius squared x over 2 squared and so that's the area of the semicircle now let's clean that up some so that gives us our area is xy plus and that is going to be uh, pi over 8 times x squared See, this right here would be x squared over 4, and then you multiply 4 times 2 is 8, and then the x squared times the pi. All right. So we want to maximize the area, so we need to find the, the derivative here. Okay. But, before, but to find the derivative, we want to get everything in terms of one variable. So let's get everything in terms of y. All right. So... Let's just solve this thing here for y. All right. So that's going to be 30. All right. 30 minus pi over 2x minus x is equal to 2y. And so y, I'm going to multiply everything through by half, is 15 minus pi over 4 x minus one half x so that's what y is equal to so that's going to give me the area is x times y and in the place of y I'm going to put this so that's 15 minus pi over 4 x minus one half x plus pi over 8 x squared all right so we'll take the derivative of this thing, but to do that, let's go ahead and distribute the x here. And so the area is 15x minus pi over 4x squared minus 1 half x squared plus pi over 8x squared. All right. So that's going to give me an area is 15x minus 1 half x squared. Right. And then if you if you look at this, I can actually take this term and this t term and combine them. Pi over 4x squared, well negative pi over 4x squared plus pi over 8x squared. And that is going to give me negative pi over 8x squared. Right. Now the other thing that we could uh, that we can do is we can write the area is 15x plus, and that's going to be negative one half minus pi over eight x squared. So what I did is I said plus, and then I took this term here, and I factored out of x squared, and that leaves me with negative one half minus pi over eight. All right. All right. So now let's take the derivative finally. So I'm going to come over here and I have the derivative is equal to 15. Okay. And then here the 2 comes down. Okay. I'll do this in two steps. 2 times negative 1 half minus pi over 8 times x. All right. So this is going to give me a prime is 15 plus, and that's going to be what? Negative 1 minus pi over 4 times x. I just multiplied each of those by 2. All right. So now we'll take this and set it equal to 0. So I've got a prime is 15. I'm sorry. So I've got. 15 plus negative 1 minus pi over 4 times x equals 0. And so let's see, negative 1 minus pi over 4 times x equals negative 15. And so that's going to give me x is equal to negative 15 over negative 1 minus pi over 4. 
and so I get x is equal to, and you see the negatives, I'll divide each one by negative 1, and that's 15 over 1 plus pi over 4. All right. All right, so so that's your value for x right there. But let's let's make it look a little better. Look what I can do here. That's 15, okay? So if I do well, let's do this. Let's get rid of the fraction down here. So how can I do that? I can multiply each term by 4. And so that's going to give me 60 over 4 plus pi. All right. So I mean, that just looks a little better and it's fine if you leave it like that, but that just looks better. We don't have to worry we don't have to deal with the fraction in the in the denominator. All right. So let's come back up here. All right. So I've got x is equal to 60 over 4 plus pi. Okay? And that's that's the value from right here. I just copied it up here. Okay? And this is in let's see it's in feet. All right. So that's the dimension for x. Now we need the dimension for y. So I get y is equal to, and look, that's right here. There's y right there. So I'm going to plug this in for y. So that's 15 minus, and then that's going to be pi over 4 times 60 over 4 plus pi minus 1 half times 60 over 4 plus Pi. All right, so I'm not gonna. Video's running kind of long, but I mean, all you would do, you would need to get a common denominator. Okay, so uh, well, let me just show you this real quick. That's gonna be uh, minus 15 pi over 4 plus pi minus 30 over 4 plus pi. Okay, So if you get a common denominator, all right, you would get the common denominator of 4 plus pi. So this 15 would have to be multiplied by 4 plus pi. And then you can, you'll be able to add everything. You can see the 15 pi's will cancel out. Okay, But anyway, what you'll end up getting is y equals 30 over 4 plus pi, and that's in feet. All right, so there's your x, there's your y. All right, so I know the video was long, but hope it helped. Uh, give me a like, share, and subscribe, and thanks for watching.